Today we're doing a bit of science, rather excitingly this means thousands of missiles, rather unfortunately it also means a lot of numbers, spreadsheets and mindless flying. Since release the Hornet has been incorrectly limited to 30 flares with each taking up two countermeasure spaces, despite having 120 chaff and flare bucket slots. This issue was acknowledged years ago and it's finally been corrected. Why couldn't they just have edited the configuration files and sorted it immediately? Well, until now DCS had only modelled one type of flare across all aircraft, requiring a new system to implement this, and the new flare type. The issue was considered low priority, so unfortunately we had to wait. But we finally got the new flare type, giving us an even 60-60 split, up to 120 flares total versus the 40-40 and 60 flares in total with the old type. So let's look at the effectiveness of the new flares. The new and old flare types both have the same lifespan and appearance, so it's just down to decoy rate. I tested in DCS 2.7.0 and 2.7.1 with our aircraft set to Immortal flying a straight and level course at 4000 feet, 250 knots over a group of Strela launchers arranged to take ion missile shots at us from all aspects. Then reviewed the TechView generated files to count up the hits and defeated missiles. I also counted near misses being anything that passed within 80 foot of the aircraft, which given the reliability of the missile it's reasonable to include as a potential hit had we been less lucky. So let's bring up the numbers. Alright, so clearly the new flares are rather alarmingly less effective than the old ones at first glance, with a 75 chance versus 50% chance of survival versus a single missile with the new flares in the test conditions. Now I can't confirm if the Strela or IR missiles in general received any changes, so let's eliminate that by running the same test but with the A10C Warthog which did not get the new flare type. So it would appear that the Strela has not been modified this update, as our HOG performed more or less the same between versions. Whilst checking the lure changes to our Hornet, I spotted a new line of code. Preferred flare kind equals 2. Hopping over to the A10C's lure, we see this line is absent, which in combination with my observations, suggests that the default flare kind is number 1. This appears to be true for every other DCS module, with no additional flare types cropping up. However, rather unexpectedly, I noticed the Viper also has the line setting flare kind equals 2. This wasn't specified in the changelog with the Hornet having the added new smaller flares, Whilst the only vaguely relevant line to the F-16's changes was countermeasures quantity did not match, fixed, which I don't believe is related. So the Viper is also using the same flare type as the Hornet. With a quick repeat of the tests, the numbers appear to back that up. I have no idea if the Viper and Hornet use the same or at least similar flare types, but at least in DCS this is now the case. At first glance at the numbers, it's obvious our new flares are not as effective, but we have twice as many, so if we double them up, are they at least equal in performance? We see the survival odds jump back up and in fact make very small gains versus dropping half of the old type. So let's try and optimise a bit for actual use in combat. Adding a small increase by 10%, dropping flares every 0.9 seconds we see our survival odds jump up by 16%, over that of 1 a second for relatively low costs, this I would consider to be a more than acceptable level of protection combined with manoeuvres. Compared to my old go-to preemptive flare program, we see a small increase in survival chances for a small cost in total program runtime. So it's hard to say if we've truly gained or lost from the changeover to the new smaller flares. If I were to hazard a guess, I'd say the new flares are about half as effective, but with an increased number of flares dropped, giving us, albeit lower odds, more chances to decoy, so despite being less effective, we net a small gain. I quickly looked at reactive flare defense too, the test scenario, one Hornet holding mill power roughly co-altitude with a MiG-29S with two R-73s, allowing front aspect shot on launch, break right, 3 to 4 Gs and flare. The opponent moves on to my 6, allowing a rear aspect shot and then a basic defence with one flare program. We saw a similar reduction in flare performance and survival odds here, just like the preemptive defence, again requiring a doubling of the flares to restore similar odds. However, because this is much more time consuming, I have only made a very small sample size. And there are many more variables I can't control like AI behaviour and positioning of both aircraft, making it hard to draw a concrete conclusion as to if we gained or lost here. Countermeasure simulation in DCS is fairly simple, being effectively a dice roll per flare in sight to the best of my knowledge. I couldn't say if the new flares versus the old large flares is an appropriate change when talking realism, Although I certainly had hoped that the change would lead to a mild increase in effective flare performance for the Hornet given the low flare quantity, but this is not the case, working out about even. 
So to close it off, in general with the Viper and Hornet we'll need to roughly double the number of flares in our programs to maintain similar levels of performance and protection as to before the changes, whilst the Viper rather unfortunately has had its effective flare performance reduced by almost half, as it could already carry 60 of the old flares before the change. Other aircraft in DCS remain the same with the more effective presumed Kind 1 flares. The knock-on side effect to all this for Viper and Hornet pilots is anyone using manual release or bypass modes with just a single or a pair of flares per press are going to have to match their countermeasure switch twice as fast to affect the same level of protection, so I would seriously consider you start making use of programs as you might struggle to pump out enough flares in time. Remember that this is a fairly small sample size and DCS will no doubt be subject to change going forwards, the survival rates in my data won't be perfectly representative of combat in DCS either, where you'll be making manoeuvres as you engage your target and egress, along with potential defensive manoeuvres or different weapon systems, so you may well be able to get by with fewer flares, but it gives you an idea of how I will be setting up my own flare programs. So I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the new smaller flares versus the older ones, I hope it brought some understanding and improves your odds of survival going forwards. Take care.